I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. I'll review the agenda. Any additions or corrections or changes to be made? No. Okay. Okay. We'll entertain a motion. I move to the agenda as presented. Move and second it. Jake? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, looks like no public comment on board agenda. Construction update. You Jeff was supposed to be here, but okay. well, obviously he's not, so I did get the notes. Uh, Kraus has completed electrical and uh, architectural and district list. Uh, some of the items on the district list were not on the drawings. Uh, other few items is one I received from Tony. I believe Kraus is to be completed. He's got a couple other things that Tony sent. Johnson Wood is also completed. Uh, all but a couple items in the mechanical list and the district list should be completed this week. Uh, Venerian painting, I have that. CNM, they completed the district punch list and are now complete. They did finish the uh, pads in the high school gym, so I think that was the last thing. Helms caulking completed architectural and district punch list and are now complete. Integral, uh, which is the uh, bleachers, uh, the board replacement boards are on order. It is scheduled to be installed yet this week. Buyer is working with Duro Last Engineers to design snow guard. Uh, installation location for the slope roofs. Um, probably just over the doorways and whatnot. We have some snow that's sliding down those slope roofs, and there's got to be like icebreakers put in. Um, the ones that uh, the friend inspect out are almost like a, I don't know, let's say like a Home Depot or something, not really a commercial. So we're figuring that out. Uh, looking to back, back one day this week, after which they'll need approved from King Scott. Uh, <laughs> very nice. Day's glass is waiting on the replacement windows. Uh, there were some replacement windows in the elementary office that were had some iron pieces when they ground steel shot into the window. Um, those have to be replaced. Uh, Booms has completed a majority of the architectural punch list. As everyone knows, they're holding contracts uh, and several several bids. Uh, Booms curve. Entrance canopy. Soffit is complete. The metal roof panels need to be curved. Cannot do it on site because it's too cold. Uh, contractor is taking that, and the company, I guess, do this, taking them back to the heated shop and they are curving them there to put on the curved piece out front here. Uh, bus garage. Uh, completed siding, roofing, and main doors. Overhead door contractor will install the overhead doors mid week to late next week. Still have to install gutters and downspouts. Metal wall panels on M19. They are installing the plywood and tie back on 217. Uh, we'll install the metal panels in the spring. Doesn't sound like they made that finish. Additional doors. They should be arriving by the end of February. You can install as soon as they receive or can install over spring break. Punch list. They have completed the interior punch list that was created by the architect in school. Uh, we are still reviewing pictures that were recently sent to us. So the 192 or 86 pictures, they still have those to go. Uh, rooms, this is from Mary. Uh, pictures, uh, some of the areas of the areas of the rooms will need some touch up. Uh, Helms caulking is touched up with paint. Hallways have been touched up. Paste uh, washed off from tile walls and stairways. Girls locker room room. Room walls are touched up. Chroma green, which is the backing for the uh, Apple Lab, that green wall, that's how they do their film. Uh, they put two coats on, they need to put another two coats on. They will probably do that this week. Uh, exterior painting, the elementary doors and uh, above the doors have not been done too cold. Uh, door near boiler room and egg room both need to be sanded and repainted. Uh, tiles need painting in boys' locker room. Heating units need painting. This is said in my conversation with Joel last summer, there would be an additional $70 per room to paint the heating units. Um, so I guess some of those units have to be painted there. I think we took shots of them. I thought they were part of the spec. I'll have to take a look at them. Uh, a few nicks in the high school principal's office that need to be filled and touched up. 
and they're still looking through the pictures as well. So that is the update. Uh, I did talk to Dan. He plans on coming March board meeting with a, he's hoping a final <coughs> budget delivery. Um, it sounds like from everything I've read, I don't know if it'll be a final, like we're closing out. Um, obviously, I did receive, so I can give you a construction update, I did receive a letter from East Point Interiors about the um, idea of that they're basically stating that they're going to replace the floors with Armstrong. So the floors were replaced this summer, so an actual closeout, closeout, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get that probably until, I'm going to say next August, where we're saying, okay, we're completely paid, everything's paid, everything's done. This is, I mean, they'll give us an idea of what we have left over for money, but you're still going to have the whole flooring aspect that has to be completed. And um, tomorrow, Virgil from All Steel will be here to give us a prototype for the computer tables. Um, the computer tables, all the wire was supposed to be hit underneath the table. He has a prototype tomorrow uh, that he's going to put on, make sure it works, meets our, our um, what we want to do as a school district, what we want it to look like. And then if that works, they'll produce them and put them in. Um, I don't think of what else. Uh, I still think we have the out, I had let, also talked to Dan and let him know that we have the outside um, area to shoot pictures of yet. We haven't completed that. And Tony did send me a list uh, Friday of some other things that he caught. So I think you're gonna, we sent the list, but I may shoot some pictures to, so they know what it is. And we still have the outside that we have to walk around. And hopefully do that here when it gets a little bit warmer out. And the snow melts off to finish up that. And Dan's aware of that as well. So he's telling me March he's supposed to give us a final well, as final as it can be, because obviously there's still things that got to be finished, but that's where we're at. Okay. Well, rebates. Uh, rebates, I gave them that. Now that um, uh, Kraus is done, they'll put the rebates together. I did talk to them about that. I did talk about them change orders. I think I got that list up. I never got it. You know, the one meeting we had in October? Uh, you said that when you first started, that there was some things that we had in our punch list that were uh, that was Kraus. Uh, it's under existing conditions. I'll have to. Is that what I was talking about there? So, uh, I'll have to see what he's talking about. That weren't part of the specs. Mary had some of that too. And yeah, yeah. Um, the unit vents were not. Or they were supposed to all paint them one color, I guess. But it's just like weren't part of the specs. So we'll have to look at the specs and find that out. Because it's supposed to be the color of the room. She did say that the like room C106 and C107, um, the maintenance group and those were she didn't paint. So obviously that wouldn't be her her cause. Um, I'll get those change orders up to the board. I will but they they they're finished and then I'll find out on the communities where they're at with finishing up that. Any more questions on that, Joe? All right, well, we'll move on to the regular meeting minutes, review of minutes. Everybody should have got those in their packet. Uh, there's no questions. We'll entertain a motion for that. I move to approve the regular meeting minutes for January 13th. Approved and seconded. Aye. Uh, move on to vote. Jay? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, next is a special meeting for January 18th. Cash and investments, 1.3 million as of 131-2020. General fund revenue, revenue for the month, 628,260. General fund expenditures for the month, 533,781. Payrolls, lunch fund revenue for the month, 25,166. Lunch fund expenses for the month, 34,384. Lunch fund balance. 107,434, January claim of 17,943.
08, 14, and 18 debt retirement revenue for the months. 2014, 25,072. 08, $8.78. And 2018, 143,557. 08, 14, and 2018 debt retirement expenditures. Nothing. 2008, 2014, and 2018, 215,024. 2018, capital tech project revenue for the month, 733 expenditures for the month, 133,098. Cash and investment balance, 2,083,622. Special revenue for fund, 8,533 expenditures for the month, 25,003. General fund accounts payable, Sixty-nine thousand eight hundred ninety-nine. Comes payable four hundred fifty-seven thousand two hundred forty-nine. Two payrolls, which include benefits, five thousand one hundred sixty dollars. Athletic, four thousand six hundred thirty-four. Credit card, one hundred thirty-three thousand ninety-eight. Capital project. I believe that's a total of six hundred seventy thousand forty-two. Okay. Thanks, Joe. All yes. right. The we just need to talk about the capital tech project there in that uh, we're, it's not the capital, it's not a tech it's it's not not Oh, I'm it's sorry, we didn't bond. catch that. It should be in the building. Yeah, it was just it should be the capital building. Capital. We had revenue of right. 733 yeah. and expenditures of 133 and we had 2 million eighty-three thousand. Good catch. Okay. All right. Well, that's the report. Uh, do we have a motion to approve it? Second. Is there a second? Second. Second by Jake. Moved by Nancy. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. Uh, next, we have administrative reports. Principal's report we'll start with. So, Mr. Connor. Good evening. Um, this week we have our literacy PLCs for um, first in uh, K1 and 2-3. K1 goes tomorrow um, and 2-3 goes on Wednesday. Um, that is where they work with our literacy coaches, uh, Meryl Kuplinski and Lori Preston. Um, to dig in deeper into the essential practices that they have to have and also to help them with their CPL um, remediation part of it. We have a professional development on Friday. Um, this Friday, elementary, we'll be reviewing our math program. So we're going to work with some routine, math routines with Jenny Kusak. Um, she's going to model some and then teach us some things that we can add into it. Um, the Envision um, company is going to come in and, and share their program or their books and High school has already done it with the high school portion of it. We haven't done it with uh, elementary, so we're going to kind of dig into that one if that's something that we might uh, go to. And then Chris and Marilyn Payanka have been working with Chris Wright um, and working with a website called Build Math Minds. Um, has strategies on it to teach uh, new mercy and um, kind of a number sense things. So they're going to share some videos and some things like that to um, maybe have our teachers kind of improve in their math skills. So it's kind of all math oriented. So that's going to be that three hour um, chunk of time that our teachers will be at. Um, students of the month for January for our PBS assembly, this uh, January was a month that they did the bowling. So it was kind of, um, you know, you get an orange ticket every other month, you get an orange ticket, you, you win a prize. Well, this one they win an orange ticket and they either have to get a spare or a strike. Um, at, and on their age level with it as they go through. Um, teachers had to, uh, white tickets run out, teachers had to pull a strike for it. So the winners of that, that would have went through all students that had an orange ticket, got a trinket or some sort, you know, whatever else, but these are the actual winners. Um, first grade was Ariana Clark and Kinley McDonald. Second grade was Jose Ramirez and Peyton Shearhart. Third grade was Gabby Hagan and Asher Waterback. Fourth grade was Gabby Walsh, Madison Shoemaker, and Sean Martin. And then fifth grade, we had Hope Obriski and Tyreek Essenmaker. Um, our white um, ticket winners, full strike, with Mrs. Camp and Mrs. Clay. Um, however, because I had to keep drawing out white tickets and um, whatever else, I also gave free recesses to, so I take them up for recess. I take their kids up, but I gave every grade level a recess then so that the teachers can collaborate for 20 minutes or 15 minutes. Um, depending on how full it is out 
<laughs> so, and then um, Mr. Eukster um, and the Knights of Columbus uh, sponsored an abuse poster, substance abuse poster contest for our fifth, sixth, and seventh grade students. Um, and it started probably in December um, by the time they got the posters done. They either worked within their classrooms or with Miss Leslie um, in their art classes uh, to do those. And then they um, picked three winners from each grade level. The winners, uh, first place winners receive $15, second place receive $10, and third place receive $5. So in our seventh grade winners, um, first place was Mercedes Landingberg, um, second place was Brianne Adams, um, third place was Owen Warchuk. In our sixth grade, first place was Ariana Amon, second place was Suzanne Schmiglinski, and third place was Isabel Wright. In our fifth graders was Braden Sweeney, first place, um, second place, Waverly Hagen, and third place, Destiny by Frank. Um, and commendations this month go to Chris Wright, who um, works tirelessly and kind of under under the radar of trying to promote an atmosphere of positivity, um, putting candy in the break room, making sure that um, part of the Sunshine Committee and things like that. So creates that classroom and building a uh, positive atmosphere that we all want to have. So that's it for me. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Warner. Uh, yeah, a few things going on in high school as well. Um, we began our 7 a.m. SAT class last week. Uh, we have 13 students that are currently enrolled in that class, which may not sound like a lot, but considering the junior class only has 44 students in it, we've got not quite a third of that class, so uh, not a bad number there. Uh, they, again, they go Monday and Wednesdays at 7 a.m. So they'll do that now for the next month and a half or so until spring break. Uh, another thing that we've been working on lately, on our website we have Did You Know videos. We have two of them out there currently. Uh, they're out there for anybody to access. Uh, one is on how to work with Microsoft Teams. So if there are parents out there that are not sure how to navigate Microsoft Teams and they want to know how do I check if my kid has their assignments or what they're doing in class, there's a video out there. It's about three, four minutes. And we'll show them everything they need to know about Microsoft Teams. Uh, the other one we have out there right now is on the counseling department and all the different, uh, in, all the information that, that's out there on the website for the counseling department. So those are the two that we have now. We are working on more, uh, and hopefully we'll have some up there shortly. So uh, those are the Did You Know videos on the website. Uh, also last week, the ISD came up had the STEM day for our 6th and 7th graders uh, where they're doing hands-on type projects, um, they have virtual reality simulators, things like that. So uh, again, STEM is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So they came up here for the day and worked with their 6th and 7th graders and uh, did all kinds of fun educational things with them. Uh, tomorrow I have planned a pizza party for our mentors. Uh, they've been working hard with our mentees here for several months now. Uh, we've done a few things to reward them throughout the year, but uh, tomorrow we're going to have a pizza party and sit down and talk with them about what's going well and what we can do to help improve that program and make it even better in the years to come. So, um, again, we've got about roughly 30 mentor <coughs> mentee pairs right now. So, it seems to be going pretty good. Um, another thing that came across my desk is this award right here um, AP Computer Science female diversity award. I'll just read the, the first paragraph here. I won't read the whole letter. It says, congratulations. Your school has been earned the College Board AP Computer Science Female Diversity Award for attaining female student representation in AP Computer Science Principles for 2019. Out of 20,000 institutions that offer AP courses, yours is one of only 639 to be recognized for achieving this important result. Uh, this honor acknowledges that the outstanding work your school is doing to close the gender equity gap in computer science. Um, congratulations to Miss Purdue. She she does the AP computers class. So nice job there in earning that award. Um, other than that, uh, this month I'd like to commend Miss Alyssa Brawlett. Uh, she's only been in our district for about six months, and she's been uh, a really great addition. She's working well on both sides with both the elementary and the high school. Um, she's doing some extra things on the side and coaching and works well with the kids, works well with the staff. She's 
anything you ask her, she's right on top of it. Um, so she's been a, a really good addition to our staff, and uh, hopefully she'll be here for quite some time. So. Last thing I have are the students of the month. Sixth grade, Cole Maurer. Seventh grade, Ethan Maurer. Eighth grade, Aaron Harris. Ninth grade, Ample Cook. Tenth grade, Jenna Arts. Eleventh grade, Lindsay Gudzinski. And twelfth grade is Danielle Shearer. I think that's it. All right. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Can you skip the white tone or you can see it. Nope, I don't have a piece of gut recorder. Uh speak <laughs> <laughs> Athletic boosters, you have a sheet there that I handed you that I circled. Uh, athletic boosters, I had talked uh, I've sent to you guys this information before, so you should know what it looks like. Um, we have moved athletic boosters next year, athletic boosters will take over all concessions. So at the end of this year, I had talked to you about that. Um, I was approached by uh, a couple booster members this past past week and asking about the payment. I guess there was a 60-40 split at some time that was supposed to happen between uh, the boosters as far as revenue of what we receive for a total and then what we receive back at the school. Although in our office we can't find any anything that says that, but that's what I'm told. So, uh, but we cannot find any letter of agreement or a board adopted policy or anything even the board adopted saying that there was a They were requesting this 45-24-01 be paid to the school district from the school district to the boosters. On the right-hand side of the column, you can see what the boosters has given back to the athletic program from 2016-17 all the way through 18-19. I guess I need to get an idea where the board sits on this and either put it on the agenda for tonight that you're going to approve that or do it to the next month and maybe you guys have some time to think about it. Um, but this, this probably does need to be done by June 30th so that when we move the um, concession stands over to the boosters, this is either saying no, no good luck and we wish you the best and we've got the concession stand and uh, we're not going to pay the $4,500 um, or here's the $4,500. I don't even know if they have a copy of the bylaws and policies. If they do, I have never seen them. They gave us some paperwork when they started this year. Um, a file, I'll have to look and see what's like, all Are they registered as like a 501c3 or anything like that? I believe now they are. They are now. Yeah, yeah. probably a little premature to say yes or no on whether we're going to say I guess, and I don't know where the old, we had no old bylaws, because that's what I was looking for, is the old bylaws that would have stated that it's a 60 book. At some point, we can't find where it says that. Okay. So, I don't know if it's just an agreement in the office. And I have no idea. Yeah, we'll do that. Or I have no idea really where it came from. Could you find anything, Terry? I've looked through all board minutes from even Mark Tenbush's days. I mean, I've looked through <laughs> almost just about everything, okay. and I can't find anywhere where it says it. We don't have anything that I know of signed. Anybody, so. And I'm not saying that we don't own the money, we just can't find anything documented that says this is how it's supposed to be split up. Okay. So that's that's something that will need to be reconciled. At least they're asking me, and I told them I'd bring it up to the board tonight. So it's we're supposed to start 16, 17 then? Or, I mean, what happened in that was the last time in 10 years? years. That's why I would retire. And I accepted that position. So that's I don't record. know about it. There's okay. no record before that. That's why we did not. There's no record. Ledger you go and look anything. through each account number as far as, so just the athletic boosters, the account number we had for them back when they were in-house, um, you could see that in there, but again, at the end of the year, I didn't know it was something that needed to go in there. So it's not something that so was, was... There's no way to reconcile exactly what that one was. <coughs> no. Type of thing. Right. So, I didn't know she was doing that back and forth. It was just like an end ending close out at the end of the year that... Just got put in there and then it was brought to my attention um, 
just this past year. So sounds a little more like working on that one. Yeah, we'll yeah. need to. We'll, we'll try to get you what we can get you, but again, we'll just need to reconcile at some point. A uh, friend of youth, I sent out who they who the past winners were. I also sent out some suggestions. You guys obviously can come up with anybody. That does need to be on the March board meeting, so you'll need to give me a name of who that is. Um, pole barn bids for the soil only are due Wednesday. I did receive the drawing of the building. I'm going to take that up to the Huron County uh, Building Zoning and Building, see what I need to do if I need to, I, if that needs to have architectural. Um, some are telling me yes, some are telling me no, it does not. So I'm going to go find out what it needs. Um, and then obviously we'll probably have to post that on our website and in the paper for taking bids on the building. Um, so I'm just let me know. They will have the soil. I think it's closed at 3 o'clock, so we'll I told you about the letters. I told you about the computer table fix that's happening tomorrow. Letters on the floor. Um, 24th, next month, a week from, is that a week from today? I mean, two weeks from today. Sorry, it's only the 10th. We have the rededication of the gym that will take place. Uh, we have representatives from 1937 67 and then our 2020 team. Um, and Mr. Um, Mr. Dick Plaza, Richard Plaza has put together a uh, script. Um, Mr. Plaza and Mr. Uh, Mauer have been working on it. I think we're good to go. We're kind of doing some retros. I'm going to get up and speak a little bit, a short, short conversation about what we did for the bond issue in the gym. And then there'll be some players talk. There's an audio coming in from Mr. Holdship. Obviously, he's up there. He's got audio. That he's going to, we're going to play and it should be a pretty fun night um, for our school and we're kind of rededicating the, the gym. Is that going to be recorded? Uh, I'm sure Mr. K will have something that we'll be able to put on a video that we'll maybe put up on a video that, we have, that we can throw on the website. So Mr. K, yeah, something like that. Or uh, Rick will probably have something. Mm -hmm. I know him well. He'll have, yeah, it'll be recorded. Yeah, <laughs> there'll be something planned. Uh, if the board is going to uh, entertain school board scholarships again, um, they will need to do that at the April board meeting. After the April board meeting, I don't know you guys usually meet on or before or whatever. Figure that out so we can get that to Mrs. <coughs> um, I think that's it. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Oh, uh, the whole business. So we'll move on to the action items. First, we have the 8th grade Washington, D.C. trip that they've been doing for a couple of years now. Yeah, uh, I did pass around that flyer yep. that has the information there. Um, pretty straightforward. Again, that's been a great trip for our kids for several years, and uh, it's, it's gone well. So I don't know if there's any questions. I've heard great things, and it seems like it keeps evolving into something better every year. So yep. Yep. if uh, we can entertain a motion. I'll move to Second. All right, move to second. We'll go. Okay. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Warner. Uh, revised budget 1920. Carry. We try not to sound like an auctioneer this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So in front of you, we have the resolution which shows kind of the differences between um, some of the sections of revenue and expenditures that we are coming up with for this revised budget. And also I have the sheet that's up on the board um, that shows some of the increases and decreases in each section as well. So I am proposing that we're going to have a deficit at this moment of $21,400 <clears throat> of that deficit. Um, some of the changes in our revenue, we have increased in total revenue of $252,917. Uh, looking at our local revenue, we have increased $84,199. Um, some sections that increased in there is we had a local tax decrease um, by $8,251. But we had an increase of preschool tuition of $17,460. Um, our activity count, we, um, as I explained last year in our June budget, our um, internal accounts had been moved 
whether it's into the general fund or into the um, special revenue fund. Your special revenue funds are going to consist of teacher-based programs, so your FFA, FCCLA, 8th grade trip, those types of accounts are moved into special revenue, which we'll talk again about in June um, for that final budget. But as of right now, um, my elementary activities, high school activities, those funds are the ones that are going to be into the general fund because they're ran by principals. So we have increased in that by 35200 This year we have to move the internal account that was remaining in that revenue into this new revenue, so that's why you see that higher number in this section of the budget. Uh, we also had an increase of $20,430 in the MSP grant. Um, the way the MSP grant works is we received a portion, which I'll explain a little bit later, in state revenue, but we also received the remaining amount that we needed to pay for as a school district um, from the bond into this general fund local revenue. Because we're getting some money from the bond, we just put that into a miscellaneous bond and local revenue. <coughs> which brings me to the state revenue portion, which increased by $217,004. And I'm going to go right into that MSP grant, which actually has to do with these panic buttons that are around the school. That's where this money came from, is from the MSP grant. Um, the state portion of that was $61,291. And again, we had to make up the difference through the grant. That was one of the stipulations that we had that extra $20,000 coming from the bond. Um, we also got an increase of Proposal A in the discretionary fund of 85119 and this has to do with that per pupil number that Joe and I were trying to come up with um, that got uh, proposed by the governor and now is at $8,111 per pupil and so we had that increases of $85,000. Um, we also received again this year the robotics grant for $12,000 and then we had a couple uh, miscellaneous items throughout the um, state aid fund that also increased, or we also got to keep, I guess, this year. Um, now that everything has been approved. The next section is our federal, which is our Title I, Title II, Title IV. And that increased in basically all three of those funds increased um, to give you that total of 24,194 increase in that section. We did have a decrease of 72435 in the other financing sources, and this has to do with two specific things. We have a decrease in the preschool GSRP. How GSRP works is you have kids in our preschool class that qualify for either GSRP or tuition base. Um, our GSRP number fell from last year, so we had a decrease in what I had proposed in June, but as I explained before, we had an increase in tuition. So tuition went up but our preschool went down, or our GSRP portion went down that we get collected by the um, ISD. We also had a decrease in special ed. How special ed works is we are fortunate enough through here in county to receive a very large portion of money back from the ISD. Um, but the only way we can receive this money is if we spend it. So how it works is every quarter I give the ISD a report they look at my figures that we had spent for expenditures, and then they take off what we were paid by the state, and they make up the difference in that section. So as of right now, we can't necessarily collect on all of that money because we haven't expended all of it. We're going to try to come up with ways to move some items that we can into special ed, but it is very difficult um, because not everything is qualified as a special ed uh, reimbursable item. Yeah, we'll show if you wanna, well, I'll give you an idea. Um, I'll use Alyssa. Mm -hmm. So we have a teacher um, that is kind of in the morning. She has a first hour um, kind of uh, overflow of about 16 kids in that class that she works with. They're not all special ed. I can't count that hour and, and charge the, the, the stick of the county back and say, hey, she's a special ed teacher. I want to count this out. We'll kick that out because there's general ed kids in there. So I have to pay for that on general ed. I can't pay for that on special ed. So it's stuff like that that they, they look at what we send them monthly and they say, yep, yeah, that's an expendable, that's a legal expendable cost. Or no, that's not a legal expendable cost. You have to cover that because that's 
have that discussion. I guess another example I think of is say there's a printer in a special ed classroom. Um, BISD tells me if a general ed student has access to that printer, I can't count that the ink or anything towards special ed costs. I mean, they are pretty. It's just not working. Yeah, it, it's very difficult <laughs> to spend this money. So we're going to try to be a little bit creative, but um, just to let you know, that's why that portion of the budget decreased. So, and then that brings our total revenue now to section seven million. Yeah, leave the door open. Door, door has to stay open. Oh. Think so. Yeah, it's a good idea. Nice, nice thought. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, that brings our total revenue to $7,284,124. Now, moving on to the expenditures, we had also an increase in expenditures of $111,604. Um, looking at basic programs, which is anything to do with teaching, we had a increase in preschool for we had an additional peer pro added because we had. Um, 18 students, and we filled our preschool classroom. So once you hit the 18 <coughs> students, you need an additional body. So we had an increase there. But we had a decrease of teaching supplies of 7350 and a decrease in dual enrollment of 4500 The next section is added needs. This has to do with the special ed um, costs and also Title I and Title II. So we had um, a decrease in the special ed wages of 31000 we had an increase in our Title I and Title II, and we also had an increase in special ed of special ed mini grants as another portion of money we get back from the ISD. Um, each teacher gets to apply for a mini grant, so that increased um, from my proposed budget. The next section has to do with pupil support, and in this section, our Funds increased by $17,090. The biggest um, increase in here was our nursing costs and also um, the supplies for nursing. Uh, before, we didn't have that high of a nursing cost, but we had worked with uh, the hospital and come up with a way to actually keep our nurse here at the school so that way we didn't lose that service we were being provided. And we also, after um, splitting up our parapros into at risk and title, we had maneuvered them around from my original budget, so that also increased wages and benefits of eight thousand six hundred and ninety-eight dollars. Um, in our instructional staff report, we had a decrease of thirty-five thousand five thirty-five, and again, that has to do with some um, title. One in Title II and also the library. We moved a teacher out of the library <coughs> and put that into uh, some actual classrooms. And we um, added in the library in here as a library aide rather than a full time teacher. That's why you see an increase there. The general administration portion is next, and it has to do with um, our, well, Joe's office and also as the board. We had an increase of $9,451. And the increase for that has to do with we have an increase of $3,850 in audit costs and an increase of $2,500 in legal costs. And then we also um, had a donation for the use of our gym for other teams of $2,056. The next section has to do with the school administration. So anything to do with the principals offices. We had an increase of 26848 overall. And um, again, I explained those activity accounts. So now not only do they have the revenue portion, they also have the exp expense portion as well. And I started out with 15000 I'm not sure how that's going to work this year because all of your field trips and everything are going to be ran through that account. So after this year, I'll have a better feel of what that's going to be. But as of right now, um, I put our expenses at about 15000 we also had an increase of the elementary principal insurance of eighteen thousand. Before our, our previous elementary principal took cash of it. Um, the next section is the business section, which is my office. Um, there was miscalculation on some retirement, 
So that is part of that increase of 13,000. And also we had uh, just a few other little sections in there that increased as well. Our next section is operations and maintenance, which increased by 82,641. That has to do with the MSP grant. The state tells me I have to code it in there, so that's why that difference is so extensive. Um, there was 81,721 added to that account. And again, it washes with the revenue. Yeah. Uh, but we should have a decrease. I decreased snow removal by about 3,000 just because it hasn't really been that bad of winter. Um, but then we had, on the flip side of that, we added a new custodian who took the insurance where the other individual did not. So we had a slight increase there as well. The next section is transportation, and we increased by $38. Um, there's just a few minor changes um, in the transportation section. Nothing too elaborate there. Our next section is central support, which has to do with any technology, and also athletics are all rolled into that one account. Um, I increased technology, 1150. Um, our technology director is planning on going and getting his um, MSBO certification. So he's going to be going to a couple more certified classes this year through MSBO. So I increased his um, travel costs and PD costs a little bit there. Um, we did have a decrease in Title II in this section. Again, this just has to do with account numbers. And that's why you see that there was actually a decrease in this section. Um, and it's more just moving money up into a different account. So. There was $17,000 there that just got moved up into a different section up above. So nothing really changed. It just got moved from one section to another. But we also had um, a slight increase in coaches as well to make the difference. Um, $5,307 less than the proposed budget. Which brings our overall expenditures to Seven million three hundred and five thousand five hundred and twenty-two. Questions for Terry? Guess not. Okay. Thank you, Terry. Uh, we need a motion to approve the supervised <coughs> budget. Second by Nancy. Seconded by Joe. Any discussion at all? Okay. Jake. Aye. All right. All right. Motion carries. Thank you, Terry. Good job. All right. Uh, next, we have a resignation of Moses Gardner as varsity boys track coach. Uh, I guess I got that. Let me just read that. Pretty short and sweet. Uh, please accept this. Dear Mr. Maurer, please accept this letter as a formal notification. I am resigning as the Ubley's, Ubley boys varsity track coach. Sincerely, Moses Gardner. Do we have a motion? I move that we accept the resignation of Moses Gardner. All right. All right, motion carries. Uh, next, we have a resignation of Heidi Sweeney. Uh, Mr. Maurer, I would like to resign from my position as JV softball coach. Sincerely, Heidi Sweeney. Motion for that. Second. Second. Jake? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Next up, we have a new hire, uh, Melissa Brawlett, as the JV softball coach, replacing Heidi Sweeney. Uh, I move that we hire Alyssa Brown as the GB softball coach. All right, both in second. And I just want to add here, uh, so Mr. Mauer wrote this, Alyssa was a former player for Coach Nikoski and Coach Stone, so she will be a great asset and will fit in well with our program. So, so that's a recommendation for this one. So we have a motion and a second. We'll move the vote. Aye. 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 Motion carries. <coughs> All right, uh, finally, we have the approval of the returning spring coaches. Uh, these are head varsity baseball coach Jim Becker, varsity softball coach Courtney Nikoski, assistant varsity softball Colin Stone, girls varsity track coach Pat Bolda, junior high track coach Stu Kalashevsky. Uh, and right now, the golf and the boys varsity track positions are open. So this is a blanket renewal of all of those coaches. We have motion for that. Nancy Moore's second. Seconded by Joe. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, no public comment doesn't look like. Business. Next meeting.
Monday, March 9th, 7 o'clock, the library. Getting adjourned.